Hello, I'm Nicholas Powers with Aero Electronics, and I want to talk to you today about thermal properties of electronics. Many times, we don't want heat in our electronics. They can be bad for the processors, they make things run worse, they can cause things to explode. But there's a situation where we want the heat that we can get, and that is in 3D printing. In front of me here, I actually have the hot end from our TAS 6 printer from Lulzbot, and this is their hexagon hot end. And what I want to talk to you is kind of how we do fused filament printing. So fused filament printing actually takes a filament of plastic, it could be something like ABS or PLA, and it heats it up to a temperature where it is melty enough to be extruded through a small nozzle to create a thin layer. We build up all those thin layers until we achieve the print we're looking for. Now, how do we actually heat up these prints? Well, we're not using anything much more different than a standard resistor. This guy I have right here is a huge 25 watt power resistor. It's not the kind you would see in a 3D printer, but it gives you an idea that these things put off heat as you put in a lot of power. So what do you do in a 3D printer? Well, in a 3D printer, we've got this small cartridge here. This contains what's known as a vitreous enamel case resistor, and it could be between three to five watts in terms of power it can handle. But what's interesting about this and what they do is they actually on purpose undersize the resistors. This cartridge is rated for 24 volts, 30 watts. And since it's got an underrated resistor in there, what you're actually doing is you're heat sinking this resistor into this block. So this block functions as a nice large heat sink to draw power away from the resistor and put all that into the material you're trying to extrude. Okay, so now we've got a bunch of heat. We've got a melty substance that we can stick out through our nozzle. How do we actually know what temperature we're at? Well, in here, we also have a thermistor. You can actually see the two wires going into the block right here, and they're embedded in this block to actually tell us what the temperature is at the nozzle, or as close to it as we can get. So we can maintain a nice tight temperature profile as we are extruding material through the nozzle. So we can vary, vary power through this resistor and make sure we don't overheat the material or underheat it and get a jam. Now, I've got a similar thermistor right here. This is, you can see they're very small, very delicate. What you end up with is a 100 K ohm thermistor inside the block telling you the temperature and reporting it back to your controller so that you don't screw up your material. Now, this is a situation where we've got an excellent demonstration of what heat sinking can do. We're putting almost 10 times the power normally meant for this resistor through it and properly heat sinking it into this large hot end which actually has a small fan to cool it off at the top so that you aren't burning things out. The reason you don't want to use, say, a 10 watt or 20 watt resistor, or even this big old 25 watt one, is that you want the resistor to output heat. One of the byproducts of resistance as you pass current through it is heat. So this guy, we put a bunch of current through it, a bunch of heat comes out, we use that heat for good things. So now we've talked a bit about the components that are present in these hot ends. We've got the thermistor and we've got the resistor. Well, you can actually get these parts on our website. Something like the Vichet RWM04106R80 is actually a similar part to what you would get here. It's a three watt, 6.8 ohm through hole resistor. And it has that vitreous enamel case that I was talking about. As for the thermistor, Something like the Honeywell R35 104 LAG series is a 100K thermistor. It's not leaded quite like this, it's actually axially leaded, and it allows you to create a hole in your block to actually pass it straight through. You add some thermal compound in there to make sure you get the good heat transfer so that you're getting an accurate temperature. And then you um, feed it through and have it out the other side and pass that into your controller. So there you go, a little bit of how we can use heat for productive means and not destructive means in our electronics. Thanks for joining me in this. I'm Nicholas Powers with Aero Electronics.